God, that's big. Oh my God, it's a big crappie. Oh my gosh, it's a big giant crappie. Got that one. Oh, that's a, that's a, what is this? It's a catfish or something. That's a catfish or something. Oh, I got him. Oh, it's a big diamond back, baby. Well guys, I didn't know we would find ourselves back out here so soon after not fishing here for a very long time. But you know, just the other day I was out here, did some bass fishing and caught some nice bass. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the video description below. Check that one out. But while I was out here, I actually saw a bunch of bluegill and red ear swimming around, especially up stream a little bit by some shoals. So we decided to come back out here again and bust out the cricket cage. One rod today, just a little seven foot medium light ACC crappie sticks, got a small reel. Uh, this other part of my bobber fell off, so I gotta, I gotta put a new bobber on. But we're gonna go up creek, toss some crickets around some stumps, some other structure, and see what we can put in the boat today. I love catching bluegill. Um, we're kind of in the middle of summertime. We're also getting kind of close to a full moon where they should be spawning a little bit. And actually when I was up there, I did see a few beds already being made. So we're gonna see if we can target some fish in those beds, maybe find some different beds, maybe just find some group up hanging out. But it should be a good time. It's a nice afternoon. It's currently five o'clock. We got about four hours of daylight to work with. And I'm excited. So if y'all are excited to tune into this Brim Fishing Mission, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more, and let's see what we can get into this afternoon. Let's go. Fish seem to be very aware that I am here. They're swirling off all over the place. My kayak is, is being pushed up towards them. Oh, there's some nice fish up there. I got a really shallow up. That's all to work right here. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it was a bass. He tried to eat my bobber. Why didn't he just eat my cricket? <laughs> That was crazy. There's one. God, that's big. Oh my God, it's a big crappie. Oh my gosh, it's a big giant crappie. It's a big crappie, guys. It's a big crappie on a cricket. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you kidding? Look at that, guys. A big old slab out here in Crappie Creek. Let's go. On a cricket. Didn't even bite like a crappie, a bit like a bluegill. Just, just, was just chewing on it and pulled it down. Yo, that's what I'm talking about. Came here for some, for some bluegill, but we're getting some crappie. Heck yeah. Well, he's for show going in the box, and I for show would throw a crappie jig if I had one. I think I got a. Oh, I might have some secret jigs on me. That's how you get the party started. I got one. Didn't even feel the bite. Just reeling it up to pick up my slack and he must have snatched it then, but there's another nice little bluegill. Not quite the keep it size that we're after, but it is the right species. I just went and checked all those beds and uh, there was only six beds there, but each bed the other day had like two or three fish on them. And then today there's absolutely nothing there. So I thought that was kind of crazy. I already got another bite right here though. It's a little nibbler. Instant, instant. Maybe there's a bed there. It's a little bit better fish. A little bit better bluegill right there. Bit it as soon as it hit the water. It looks like a good spot for a brim bed. If I was a bluegill and I was wanting to bed up, that'd be where I bed up at. Nice little male. Where are the big ones at? Is there another one there? Oh, something swirled my bobber. Eat the cricket. I don't know if I'm too deep or not. Oh, oh my gosh. Ah, watch out, coleslaw. Okay, let's let's get one right here. Let's get one right, oh my gosh, yes. Yes, there's a bed there, gotta be. Gotta be, right? But they're small. They're shrinky dinks. Another one, another one, another one. Yep, stacked, stacked, stacked. They're stacked. I knew they had to be somewhere. 
Oh my gosh. Starting to kind of get up on him. Back up just a little bit. I don't want to scare him. Okay, right here, you got all these logs, and in the middle of it, there's a hole. Not saying the fish made it that way, but I think they took advantage of that nice little hole right there and nested up. Granted, we have to catch more than three to consider it a nest or to find that, but if we get like five or six in a row right there. Oh my gosh, they're stacked. <laughs> they are stacked right there. They're just not, they don't seem big. Got him that time. Got him that time. Man, I missed like five in a row. <laughs> I missed five of these five of these guys in a row. Easy. They're stealing my crickets. I got that cricket back. And they about to start getting thrown in the cooler and getting scaled, getting their heads cut off, and getting fried up whole is what they're about to start getting. They are in there thick, thick, thick. That's like I can't, I just can't get the hook in them. And they keep stealing my bait. Okay, I pulled right up on this little hole. <laughs> oh my gosh. You see that? As soon as it hit the water. And it's just these tiny male bluegills. They're chunky little guys. But they're just not, they're not, they're not what we're after. But I can't stop catching them. Definitely bedded up right here on the bank. Like really tight to the bank right there. I mean, that's about to get smoked in one. Look at that, there's a better one. Slightly better. Okay, that's slightly better. He's thick, a thick one. And you know what? He's going in the cooler. We frying that boy whole. Got that one. Oh my gosh, it was a bigger one. And he came off. Got that one. Oh, that's a, that's a, what is this? It's a catfish or something. That's a catfish or something. It is a catfish. It's a catfish. I can't give him drag. He'll take me in this bush. I got a catfish. I've got a catfish. Don't break me off. Don't break me off. Oh my gosh, I got a catfish. Don't break me off. I only got four pound test line. Oh no. Oh no, is it a flathead or a channel cat? What's that channel? Look at this rod. Oh, don't go there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, we ain't doing that. Oh, nice channel. Nice channel catfish on a cricket. Oh yes, I want you. I want you. Woo! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, I was hoping that was gonna happen at some point. Look at that folks, we got ourselves a nice little channel catfish, all beat up, scarred up, kind of lean. I've noticed that a lot of these fish out here are lean. I'm not sure if it's because of the lake being drained and maybe uh, less availability of forage. This catfish is probably trying to get him a bluegill, but instead he got a cricket and now he's got a date with my cooler. That's what's up. That was fun. My first instinct with that catfish was to loosen my drag, but then if you look around right here, there is. You don't want that catfish pulling drag because he would pull me right into a bush, so I just had to just hold on and hope that my line didn't break. I've only got four pound leader line on this right now, which isn't, isn't super ideal because of all of the structure and it's not, I don't really need light line. Um, I think six would be perfect, but we're just working with what we got. But I'm gonna up another cricket, toss in here and see if he scared up all this bluegill or if there's still more to be caught and possibly another catfish. <laughs> it's a little baby lipper. <laughs> He's small, but he is chunky.
Oh, that's another, that's decent one. That's a red ear. Let's go. I told you I saw some red ear back up in here. Not a giant red ear by any means, but it is a red ear. We'll send him back. Oh. You just gotta let him just, oh, finally got one of those bait stealers. That one is tiny. I ought to keep him and put him on a hook and toss him out for catfish bait or even crappie bait. A big crappie would eat that thing in a heartbeat. Tiniest of the day. Those are the ones that have been stealing our stuff. There we go. So many more small sunfish than I imagined we were going to catch out here today. Oh, oh, got a crappie. Got him. <laughs> got him on the secret, Jay. It's all I got in here for crappie right now. Oh, he broke it off. Look at that. Came back up here in the creek. Uh, was throwing a little jig around. All I have is a little secret jig on me. I think I might have a crappie magnet in this box now that I think about it. But uh, caught me a nice slab. So now I got two slabs. I got two bluegill and a catfish. How about that? There's a fish. A little crappie under the bridge. Not a big one, but we'll take it. Old secret jig did it to him. Well, that ended up not being nearly as good or as cool as I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know where those fish went that were on the beds. They were gone. Um, didn't get into any big bluegill, but it was nice to catch a couple of big slabs and that catfish, they took us for a ride, so that was cool. But right now we are um, dragging the kayak through this shoal. It's very, very shallow. It's a lot lower than it was the other day even. Um, and then we're just gonna load it up and head back to the house. But I'm gonna pull these fish out. At least these two slabs, these things are sick. <laughs> Definitely some summertime looking post-spawn crappie. They are not very thick, but they are good fish. It's probably a 13 incher. This here's probably a 12. Nice crappie, and we got this catfish. Look at him. He's long and lean too. I guess everything in this creek is gonna be long and lean because the bass that I caught the other day were also the same way. But got a nice little whiskered buddy and a couple of little little bluegill to add to the potluck. So we're gonna get out of here. Get these fish cleaned up and we're gonna cook them up for supper tonight. So stick with us. I'll catch you guys when we get back to the house. Guys, there's a big snake over here. <coughs> guys, there's a snake right here underneath my kayak. Oh, I got him. Oh, it's a big diamond back, baby. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that snake. He's missing most of his tail. Oh, he wants to strike. Don't strike in my face, buddy. Let's get a good control. Grip on you. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Look at the size of this diamond bag, guys. I just got done talking with y'all. About to go through this thing. I saw this guy slithering. Whoa. 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 Uh, come here, buddy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. He wants to do it. I can't. He's got his head too close to his back. Got him. Ah, he got me a little bit. Oh, he got me. Nope, 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 nope. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Look at that. What a crazy looking diamondback. He's missing the end of his tail. It's just a nub. You guys, what a crazy looking diamondback water snake. I have not caught one of these in a minute, especially with any size. This is a great place for him to be because there is a bunch of small bait fish that are kind of trapped in this puddle. So he's just out here just having a field day on him probably. But that is an awesome snake. You can see they has that diamondback pattern. Really, really cool. We got the big bulgy eyes. That is an amazing. He got me right on the hand just a little bit when I went on the head grab. It's really hard not get bit by him when you do that, but that's okay. It doesn't really hurt bad. And I wanted to get him so I could show him to y'all. What an awesome snake, guys. And he's kind of chilled up too. He's not nearly as aggressive as he was already just with a little bit of handling. But look at the tip of his tail. It's very nubby. He's missing. I mean, that's basically. He's basically missing all of his tail. Like his vent is right there. And uh, missing, I mean, probably six to eight inches. That's a cool snake. We're gonna send him back right here in the creek and we're gonna continue making our way back out of here. But that is awesome. <sighs> this guy is being super chill now. Oh, there he goes. 
Look at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there he goes. Heck yeah. You know we, we wouldn't let that guy get away. <laughs> Alright, we're back at the house now. We got our catfish. A couple of crappie. I'm going to clean these guys really quick. I'm going to fillet them with the handheld fillet knife. And these are what we're going to be eating up tonight for supper. I want some fresh crappie fillets. I haven't had any crappie fillets in a minute. And I haven't really had many catfish recently either. So we're going to do a little bit of that and see how they taste tonight. We'll do a little tutorial real quick. So first I like to cut around the head. About to see how sharp this knife is. I just grabbed it out of the drawer. It's not super sharp, but it'll do. Then I'm going to run the knife down the back. Oh, it's, it's sharp enough. It'll work. It'll work for three fish. Maybe all the way down. Then we're going to shove the knife through the fish. Like that. Come out down the tail. And I like to grind those bones to get as much meat off of them as possible. Then we're going to kind of keep the knife blade up. Start pulling the fillet away from everything else. We're going over the ribs right now. There's a point when you get right there, that's the little pin bones on the ribs. Where you can just go straight down on them. You can hear it kind of grinding on those bones. And then you're going to do some really smooth cuts, peeling the fillet right off the side of the fish. Boom. There's our fillet. Now we're going to take the meat directly off the skin. Get that going. This is where a sharp knife comes in handy. This one's not as sharp as I thought it was just a second ago. But not bad at all. We have ourselves a delicious Cole Harkin hand-sized fillet off a nice little 12 inch slab crappie. Like I said, these, these crappie are not very thick at all. I mean, you can see they are thin. They are skinny. They are some post-spawn summertime crappie for sure, but they still got decent fillets on them. We're gonna run, do the other side of this one, do this and do the catfish, and then we're gonna heat up some grease and we're gonna fry them up tonight. All right, the sun done went down on me, but we got our fish out here. I got them seasoned up, so what I did is I mixed up some beer batter and I put a lot of crawfish boiled dry seasoning in there to make it spicy. I want some spicy fish tonight. And this is a little sliver of catfish fillet. I, I, I cut up into small little strips just so we can get them evenly coated and they'll fry up evenly. Oh, so we'll put a couple of catfish in there, a couple of slab crappie fillets. They're cooking up nicely already. That should be pretty good right there. We're gonna get them all situated in the grease bath and then we're gonna taste them. Here we have our final product. We've got a couple of slabby patties, which I think that I have the bottom of both these buns on this one and the tops of both the buns on that one. Then we've got several fillets. We've got, um, we put the crappie on the sandwiches and we've got all these little pieces of catfish. Those look really, really good. They crisp up to a golden brown and I'm ready to sample them. Feeling catfish first, just a little piece of catfish. Look at that thing, that thing crunched up nice. And I have a feeling that this is gonna be very spicy because I can see all of the crawfish seasoning infused into that filet. Here we go. Mm. Does it get any better than fresh catfish, guys? That is delicious and very spicy. I might went a little overboard with it, but it is very, very good. I'll show you what I use really quick. It's right here in my pantry. This is the stuff right here that I use. Just this Cajun uh, crawfish swamp dust. I've used it in boiling crawfish before and making poor man's lobster. And I've used it a little bit um, whenever I'm frying up some fish and adding it to the mix, but I added a bunch of this stuff. It is potent. It is good. Very, very tasty. I 10 out of 10 recommend that stuff if you're into that kind of cajun -y crawfish taste. But that was good. I'll take a little, a little, a little bite of some slab crappie real quick. Look at that thing. Looks like a dinner plate. Mmm. <laughs> that was so tender, just like melted. And it's so fresh. This fish was alive and swimming like two and a half hours ago. And now it's in our belly. About as fresh as it gets. Yeah. 
that's good. Gonna have to go back out and fish that area or another area really soon and try to get some more of those slab crappie. I'm honestly not even sure which one I liked more. I like them both a lot. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thanks for joining along with me. I'm sorry we didn't just bust the brim up like I thought we were going to. But at least we did catch some and we caught some crappie, caught a catfish, and of course, caught a big old diamondback water snake. So if y'all enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Bye, guys.